Is this house abandoned? Why is this house abandoned and what's it all about? This area, while I did mention the word Eden, Eden's on the side over there. And this little area is actually called the village. The village is in Big Bay and it's part of the greater Bloberg area. It's actually, sorry, it's not Big Bay, it's Small Bay. We've got Big Bay, we've got Small Bay, we've got Eden. It's in the Greater Bloberg Table View area, which is part of Milnerton, which is part of Cape Town, and it's a part of South Africa. What we have here in the village is a smaller little area in Small Bay. They call it the village because it is so small. It's right next to Big Bay. So you're running past the sea, and then you've got Big Bay, and then you come into Small Bay. In Small Bay, you've got a couple of little restaurants on Hayse, on the rocks, and it's a lovely little spot where you can come down to the beach, relax, sit and watch the sea and enjoy the moment. See the ships in the bay. You can actually see Cape Town from a small bay if you're sitting by the coast. This is Aunt Sacy, a very popular restaurant in Small Bay. A lot of people come here and hang out because there's a little beach in front of it. Nice to sit and look out. The people that actually swim in this little bay sometimes come here on holiday and accidentally drown because they overlook it. It's a lovely little spot, difficult to find parking. There are some lovely homes here where people live. And just down the road from it is a little restaurant called On the Rocks, which is also not too bad, but I prefer Aunt Sacy, to be honest with. You. And if you know, if you come down here on New Year's Eve, it's actually great. You can watch the fireworks at the VNA waterfront, which is also great fun. This house that was abandoned, there's a big story behind this. And the owner of this house was actually a developer. Now, I don't want to mention any names because I don't want to get sued for anything unusual or you know, get into any kind of trouble. I'm just going to talk about it as the developer. But this guy developed a whole load of little complexes down here in the Big Bay area, one or two of these complexes actually started to fall apart. In fact, the cracks were so bad, the walls were splitting apart in one of the most horrific ways. So they had to come in and redo all the foundations on these properties to get them livable. This obviously started to affect his reputation. Houses weren't finished, properties weren't done on time. And actually I met a few people that had purchased their property from him and then he had gone into administration, liquidation, whatever the situation, and the house had not transferred into the new owner's name. So it was still sitting in his name. So now we're sitting with a, a legal situation. And they had purchased these properties for, let's say, around 1.4, 1.5 million rand at that time. And this was eight to 10 years ago. Thing being that the government puts a seize on everything. They put a hold on all these assets and they put a hold on SRS and all that sort of thing because there were loads of taxes out standing and I believe that's one of the reasons he was in trouble. Those people have still not had their properties transferred into their name. Now the trouble is if they never transfer the property into that person's name they'll probably give them the 1.4 or 1.5 million rand back but all the extras that they've done on the house are, are wasted and not to mention that property is now worth 4 million rand 10 years later so they can't replace it so they can't take that 1.4 million rand and go and buy another property with that money. Now that's quite a disaster. So this house that's standing here in the village that's abandoned is effectively in the same sort of floating situation. They have had a for sale sign on it and I don't know how far it goes, whether they can sell it or not, but I've actually got my doubts as to whether this can be sold. I wanted to go in there and show you guys the place, but I actually can't get in and it does look a little bit dangerous. This is it from the outside. But Small Bay as, as, as a little village is actually quite amazing. We're in the main road going towards the Small Bay Beach. And uh, this is the houses in the main road, just a little bit up from the beach. They are very, very, very smart, very comfortable homes. Tasty, expensive, and fun. In this particular road, they actually didn't accept a 7 million rand offer for one of the houses on auction. You can imagine how valuable these properties actually are. You can see there's a lovely view. A lot of these homes wake up in the morning to the sound of ships. You can see Cape Town in the distance from here if your property's in the right spot at the right height overlooking the sea. Now we're going to go down towards the beach here and then you'll be able to see this lovely spot that we tend to go to and enjoy on a regular basis. Now, the abandoned house is in this street. This is very, very popular. This is Stadler Road. Homes are expensive here. Look how beautiful they are. 
but this is Stadler Road. Everyone comes down here, parks on the beach, and just enjoys the view and looks at the ships and that sort of thing. It's it's absolutely marvelous. Then uh, there's an old house down here that, yeah, man, it's never been improved. The people just live there. It must be worth a fortune, the property. You can imagine one day somebody's going to purchase that and do something with it. There are one or two old properties for sale down here. Here's the old house on the right. Nobody's done anything with that home. It is just what it is. Houses and properties here really do go for about 10 mil, 15 mil. There was a house that went on auction here and it got a 7 mil bid and they turned it down. They didn't want it. There was a little property up the road, just a piece of land, which was selling for four and a half million, just the land alone. But I mean, the views from up here are quite stunning. What you have to take into account though, is when you buy a property close to the beach, firstly, because of the costs, your rates and taxes are going to be extortionate and high, and it's going to be expensive expensive to actually live there. So keep that in mind if you're ever purchasing down in those areas and not to mention the closer you are to the beach the more rust you tend to get and I believe Cape Town's really bad for rust and we lived on the beach for a short while maybe a year or two no it was two years I think somewhere around there and we moved a kilometer back. I'm now about one and a half kilometers away behind the dune and the difference in damage from rust and that sort of thing is immensely better. It's huge. I mean things were rusting in a year and now things are not rusting in five to 10 years. So there is a really big difference just moving about one and a half kilometers to two kilometers away from the actual coastline. If you live on the coastline, man, if you park a car outside, it will be gone in no time. Air conditioners get rusted through, bries, things like that. Anything that's got some steel on it or even alloys, they just tend to rust away and, and disappear. So be very careful about wanting to live right on the beach. And that said, also living a K and a half to two Ks back, I've also got the advantage advantage of being closer to the shops, closer to the other th uh, everyone around me and closer to the main roads. Whereas being on the beach, you are a little bit away from it and you can't just walk down to the shops. Well, there is some shops down there. There are some nice shops actually, not as city or town. So guys, that's a little bit about the village. It's a stunning little place, beautiful little area to live in. I would like to show you Eden, which is right next to it, more like the shops and that sort of thing. So we'll get to that next time. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Till next time. Ciao. Bye.